Hey y'all, welcome to Rico's Garage. Not gonna do a lot of small talk, gonna get right to it. Uh, left you hanging last night and uh, came in here, done some things off camera that I'm gonna show you. Figured out the gauge situation, how to make those work. Uh, most importantly, cleaned up the shop. Got all the tools straightened up, so maybe when we get some work done today, we're not looking to spend all day looking for tools. So, uh, not much sense sitting here talking. Let's just get to work. So here we go. First things first, when I left y'all hanging last night, I was concerned about hooking up the water temperature because all our ports up front were uh, in use. But I figured out back here on the back of the head we had a three-quarter pipe thread port and I just went to the tractor supply, got a bushing, bushed that down to 3 8 and installed the temperature switch for the uh, 454 that originally came in this truck and it'll tie into the gauge on the dash so that'll handle the temperature again just a pipe, simple pipe bushing 454 sensor which is what this truck came with and we'll tie it into the factory gauge on to the oil and the reason I'm boring you with this is this is one of the questions I see on the forums quite a while how do I get the gauges to work get our light in there there you can see again the factory 454 oil pressure switch that's going to go to the dash gauge. It's eighth inch pipe thread on the block, which this right here is where the factory dodge sensor goes. I just removed the dodge sensor, put a 45 degree street elbow that you cannot see because it's that's in a bastard spot, and then bought the new oil, 454 oil pressure switch, and we'll wire that to the dash. That should work just fine. Those gauges, they don't care what they're in. They just want to see water temperature and oil pressure. They don't care if it's coming from a Cummins, a 454, a Fiat, it, it, they just don't care. So, with a pipe bushing on the temperature switch and a 45 degree street elbow, we got the factory sensors in place, that's handled. Okay, news flash. My beautiful camera shy wife brought parts. This changes the direction of things. I don't remember what I was showing you, but I'll get back to it. I think we were talking about the alternator. Depending on what's in here. Block heater. Don't know how, uh, how often we'll use that. Get the block heater in there. That'll be easier to do before we put the turbo on. There's our harmonic balancer. Rock on. That one doesn't look like a fat woman fell on it. We'll half-ass fog this with some black paint. Put the block heater in while uh, while we're waiting on it, and then we can get the belt and the front accessory drive on it. This is going to be good. When I come back to you, we'll have the we'll put the balancer on. We'll have the block heater in, and be ready to assemble that turbo over there that you can't see. We're going to assemble this turbo with our our new rebuilt cartridge. Our wastegate that uh, got tore up when it came crashing off the engine hoist. We'll install all the pull all this stuff together, install it, make it happy, and have a turbo on the engine. So, with that being said, I'll put you on pause, and I got some painting to do. We're back. It's starting to look like something, and I'm actually kind of, kind of starting to get excited. Um, before we go any farther, it's a nice warm day outside. I've got the doors open in the shop. Get some air moving through here. 
but I have to apologize for the table saw in the background because the next door neighbor's playing Bob Vila. I don't know what he's doing, but whatever he's doing, he's more qualified to be doing that, and I'm more qualified to be doing this, so we'll just... I don't know where I left you off when uh, my beautiful wife came walking in with some parts that uh, the postal lady brought, but anyway, uh, the harmonic balancer showed up, so we got that on. Uh, the bolts torqued to 135 foot-pounds, for those of you that are curious about that sort of thing. Uh, we're going to the new alternator on. I think I told you that earlier, but I don't know how this is all going to play out with the editing and everything. Bolted the new alternator on from O'Reilly's. This is the uh, 95 Dodge alternator. We're going to stick with that setup. Um, AC delete, that's something I see on the forums, was actually pretty, pretty easy for this. Uh, you just buy a belt for a non-AC truck. Imagine that. Routed a little different. The factory AC compressor mounts down here on a Dodge. I have seen guys cut the bejesus out of the frame and get that to work, but I can't get myself to do this on a truck that's going to tow, uh, you know, 16, 18,000 pounds. I can't get myself to modify the frame like that. They do make a high mount uh, AC compressor bracket. It's on I think the Ford F800s had it, some of the uh, Kenworth T300s had it. They're out there, but they're not inexpensive. The bracket and everything, by the time you piece everything all together, because you got to go with a different water neck and tensioner, and I think even the alternator mount, it's, it's not just, hey, give me that high mount KW bracket. No, it goes to a bunch of rigor more, probably about five, six hundred dollars that I just don't want to spend right now. Because as you can see, this truck was the factory air-conditioned truck, but it's an old R12 system, and I'm sure everything needs replaced. Evaporator, receiver, dryer, condenser, uh, compressor, everything. It's just an expense that I don't want to do right now. Maybe later I may go with a vintage air setup and then talk with them on how what compressor to use. And I may just bite the bullet and modify the frame. But for now, this is what we're going to go with. We'll run it without air. It's not a huge deal to me. That's where we're at with the air conditioning. That's how you can get, if you want, want to bypass the AC on either your Dodge truck that has gone bad or you're doing a swap like this. Just buy you an on air conditioned belt. Right or different, you're good to go. Uh, again, I told you we're going to run the Chrysler alternator. In doing so, we're going to go with the uh, old school Chrysler voltage regulator. And I'm going to do a separate video on that because it's actually a pretty easy deal. For those of you that don't know, the Dodge trucks, the computer controlled the the voltage, the voltage regulator was actually part of the ECM, which we don't have anymore. So this is not only going to be beneficial in the swap, but if you have one of those older Chrysler products and then that part of the computer goes out, this will get you going and, you know, it's inexpensive, it's fairly easy. That's why I'm going to dedicate a separate video to that when the time comes for that. Also, one other thing while I'm up here, this block is where the crankshaft position sensor goes. And one of the reasons why I looked all over for a 12 valve balancer, because a 24 valve balancer will bolt on here just fine and they're readily available. For some reason, they repop the 24 valves, but not the 12 valves. But the 24 valve doesn't have these two notches right here. And we can wire the factory crank sensor when we go to wire this truck to work with a tachometer in four cylinder mode. 24 valve doesn't have these notches, so that would not work. So, again, we'll show you that in another video because wiring is going to be a whole other deal. Everybody says you only need one wire to start these trucks. Actually, you don't need any wires to start it, but to get everything going, to, you know, to have a charging system, to have the grid heater, uh, the fuel shut off cylinder to work the way it's supposed to. There's going to be a little more wiring involved to that. Um, I talked to you earlier 
about the gauges, how we figured that out. This right here is going to be our switch for our electric fan because while I don't have the, the core support and everything done up yet, it's pretty apparent we're going to run out of room and we're going to need to run an electric fan. So we're, we're already putting that in place. I'm off the radiator hoses just because when we got the room, let's throw them on there. Starter is mounted, the 4BT starter mounted in here with our mounts. While it is getting close, we are starting to run out of room. It's in there. Uh, clearance for a downpipe is going to be interesting to say the least. Because now we have a starter, a drive shaft, a clutch master cylinder, everything all occupying the same spot. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, with today's FedEx shipment, we are down to only needing one more part that we have ordered, and that is the throttle linkage. So I'm not going to fire this thing up without throttle linkage. I think that pretty much brings you up to speed on what I've been doing off camera. I didn't want to bore you with all the details. You, you don't need to watch a video on how to put a belt on. You don't need to watch a video on how to put a hallmark balancer on. But I'm going to get to something that you guys may want to watch. Uh, the turbo needs some work. I put a new cartridge in it, which I'll explain. Uh, the wastegate actuator got shit canned when we had the whole debacle with the engine falling off the train. So let me reset the camera and let's get to work on that turbo. Okay, I'm going to bring over part of our turbo. I don't have it completely assembled yet, as you can obviously tell. I want to know how everything is going, is going to function. How this is all going to clock. We have a drain tube that hooks right here to the bottom of the cartridge and drains down down to the block and I, I am running out of freaking room. It's one other thing I forgot to tell you. I got the block heater installed. It showed up on the FedEx shipment. Once again I didn't figure anybody needed a video on how to install a block heater. I may have to do a video on how to untangle the cord. Let's just let that fall down there. Okay, those are tight. going to go where it needs to go. Now, get an idea where that uh, cold side housing is going to go. Hooking this snap ring is a real cockroach. I know there's no way we can do it on the truck. I'm not even going to try it. So I've had this turbo together a couple times already but due to some bad parts we had to take it back apart and I did learn a little trick for this snap ring which I'll show you this next tip I can't remember where I've seen it somewhere on the interwebs like I told you putting this snap ring on this cold, cold side is a major major pain so I thought last time I looked around for advice and some guy suggested putting valve lapping compound on your channel locks and it worked of course now that I got it on camera 
Probably not going to work. But I'm going to try it because like I said previous to this pressing this snap ring was a real bitch. And I'm not sure if it's just up there. Valve lapping compound gives it just an extra bit of grip or what? But it takes three men and a boy and 37 cuss words. Now maybe I can tap it into place. Maybe. Valve lapping compound on the channel locks for the win. You're just going to have to trust me. It doesn't go nowhere near that smooth without it. So there you have it. Turbo installed, a bunch of other loose ends tightened up. Uh, I'm going to end the video right now because uh, two things actually. Number one, I'm not sure which direction I'm going to go yet. I need to kind of sit back and reflect and make a list and decide which way to go. And number two, what, what I'm going to do is, you know, pretty dry, boring, just little knick-knack stuff. But it all needs to be done to get to the big picture. Uh, if I had diesel fuel, and throttle linkage, I could actually fire this thing up where it is, but I'm not going to fire it up without throttle linkage. That just seems like a bad idea altogether. So, uh, without any further ado, I'll uh, let you guys go, figure out where I'm going to go next, and we'll catch you again on another episode of Rico's Garage. Later.